So far we use variables a lot, but we didn't think really about what kind of objects these variables are. Now we will learn in a formal way what they mean. The topic is declarations. So C is a static type system. That means when you create a variable, you must declare it to be of a specific type and it becomes such a type at runtime. So it becomes in fact an object at runtime of this given type. So when I declare a variable of a given type, the compiler then remembers this type and makes sure that the type is used correctly. That also means we must always declare our variables what type they are before they can be used. Its static type system means that at runtime the, the type of this variable cannot be changed. Okay, let me show you an example. So if I say I create a variable, let's call it Julian H. Okay, so this variable is of type integer now, but I cannot, I can use it like an integer, so I can do some math with it, right? I can say Julian H is 5 times 2 or something, and I can um, say Julian H, I multiply whatever it is, with 2 and store it in Julian H, which is this expression, right? Or this expression. So that's totally legit, right? And But I cannot say Julian H is now of a different type. And C knows various basic types and bronze types. So in basic types, we have integer, which is a whole number. It can be a negative number and a positive number. It's about minus 2 billion up to 2 bi billion in positive range that an integer value can have. Ansigned means you don't have a sign, which is the negative value. So it's only a natural number from 0 to about 4 billion. You have floating point numbers, which we learned about, double position floating point numbers, which have more digits in a nutshell. We have a single characters and we have strings, which is basically an array of a character. So all these declarations here, they are part in our EBNF syntax definition of the declaration. So any compound statement that we have starts with the declaration and then with a statement. Let me show this to you. So we had in our int main function, we start a block. A block is basically a compound statement. So whenever a block starts, well, we can have declarations. So int Julian H, yeah, that is a declaration. Okay, and then followed by a declaration, you can have any number of declarations, is any number of statements. Here we have two statements in this example. Good. Um, there is in C standard types that are quite portable. That means platform independent. I strongly recommend to use them because they are more clear than using like int or unsigned integer, for instance. So to use them, you have to add include standard int and include standard bool. Then you can use the data type bool, which is truth value, which we know about. And you can use data types like this. And this means how many bits it has. So u stands for unsigned. So basically you can have here an unsigned integer that is eight bit long. Okay, um, for all these um, integer data types, note that if you do an integer division, you, you always truncate the remainder. So 7 divided by 5 is 1, because 1 times 5, well, but 1 times 5 isn't 7. The reason is that you have some remainder, and to get the remainder you have to use this percent operator, which is the modulo operator. So 7 modulo 5 equals 2. Let's try this out. Let me create a very simple program um, in which we just print out 10 divided by 3. And we print the remainder as well. So, so we just have to repeat this. 10 and here we go. Let me save it as 
modulo dot b. Okay, and now I should include standard io dot h to make print f. Note. Let me do that and compile now modulo dot c. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, true. Okay. I use the percent character. Percent character means it it is one of our um, format part of our format string. Um, if I want to print a percent character itself, I have to use percent percent, right? Because percent tells the compiler something that stands next to it will be used to format the string. And in this case, I wanted to print percent, right? Okay, let's do it. Run it, and we get 10 divided by 3 is 3, right? Because 3 times 3 is 9. And now we have 1 as a remainder. So 10 divided, the remainder of divided by 3 is 1. Right, so that really worked. Um, let's move on. So talking about the ranges of value, well it depends on the number of bits obviously. Well if you have an integer that has 8 bits, we know how to do that from our tools complement. So the range is from minus 128 to plus 127. If it's unsigned it starts from 0 and it goes to 255 because that is the number range that we can do with 8 bits. Similarly for 32 bits, but then we have the 2 billion and 4 billion respectively, right? How to compute it, here you can see as an examples um, how to do it. And that's the general math. I don't go here into too much detail. So when you declare a type, well, how do we do it? Well, we, we have to specify a declaration, which is to say a type and an identifier. So uh, what is a variable? Well, a variable is in fact an object that is referenced by a symbolic name, which we t say is the identifier. It has to be a unique name. Generally speaking, x is fine, but this is my variable is fine as well. Okay. And here we do a little bit of math. Here you can see if I divide five by two, well, I do some integer, integer arithmetic which gets rid of the remainder. And I can also work, declare another object, v here, um, variable v of type character and assign to it a character. So any kind of character, by the way, is assigned using this single quotes here. That means whatever a meant in our ASCII table, this number is now taken and assigned to v. And the string can be assigned using double quotes like this. Strings are more complicated, so we'll talk about them at some time. So let's talk about valid identifiers. So it any kind of identifier that you have can consist of any letter, number, and underscore, but it cannot start with a number. And it cannot be any C keyword that exists. Okay, because there would be some kind of confusion otherwise. Here are some valid identifiers, num1, num1 num lowercase. Note they are different because C is case sensitive, as we said. And we have underscore answer as a third option. Here are some invalid identifiers, starting with a number is invalid, starting with something that is not a, a character is invalid as well. White spacing is invalid and a keyword that is invalid. So here is a list of built-in keywords in C that we will talk about throughout the course, so no, no need for you to remember them now. But as you can see, that's the key. There are not so many keywords, in fact. So, And those keywords, you cannot use them as an identifier because it would confuse our compiler. 